this week is a big week for us. We are going to be redoing this guest bedroom. It is right now functioning as a guest bedroom slash office. We have a small home, cottagey home, so there's only so much limited space. We've learned to be very creative with our space. Right now, this week, we are dealing with this guest room. The holidays are coming for a few years. We haven't had any guests because, of course, the pandemic has been going on. So we are now welcoming a guest for the holidays. My father used to come here for Thanksgiving every year, and it was our tradition, and he would stay with us. And he was very flexible about where, flexible about where he stayed. Um, we had room and space in the basement. We had, um, sometimes he'd be on the couch. He's the kind of person who'll just sleep everywhere. He's getting to an age, and, and it's getting to a time where we wanna have a space for our guests. We were going to eventually build a space downstairs. It would take a lot of planning, a big budget. And since our daughter moved out and she has her own home now, uh, she has, uh, this used to be her bedroom. Uh, she has moved on, so this room has become an office slash guest room. What's great about this space is uh, it has the multi-functions. What's not so great about this space as this room has become a catch-all for everything. We, we do our gift wrapping in here, which is fine. I'm still gonna incorporate that somehow into this design. We'll have uh, storage for that. Um, we're still going to keep our office and we're going to have the guest room in here. So, um, for now, until we decide to expand later down the road, um, maybe a decade from now, for now this will be that uh, space for guests to stay but we also want to when guests aren't here to be able to use this for an office we can't maximize the space so we want to have better use of the space so people when they're in here won't feel cluttered it won't look messy and it's a little bit of an organized chaos right now and we can't have that somewhat organized but i'm going to show you a little bit of what's going on in this room and how we're going to fix that solution so this week we would, we would like you to come along and join us on this journey for this bedroom redo. In this room, we have a catch-all for all our papers. I'll be honest, we don't really use that. It's there for no purpose at all. So we're getting rid of that. We are painting all the walls, including the ceiling. We'll be doing a treatment here Wait till you see, so you can see what's going on this wall. I promise you it's not brick and it's not stone. It's like, no, you've seen a lot of that. But it's going to be a, a treatment here on this wall. This picture we are keeping, um, Paul has gotten it as a gift um, from his aunt that was passing it down. And it's just, it's a great picture. I love this pretty picture. However, the frame is very old fashioned. No offense, it's just very 1980s-ish. So we are going to be building a new frame to make it look beachy and cottagey and make it look a little more rustic. The only thing with uh, that is it takes up time. So it's going to take a lot of our time this week, but it will get done. The curtains we are keeping because we are going with the theme, as you can see by our picture here, we are taking this as our big inspiration, as well as another uh, beachy picture that I did inherit from my mom, but the glass is broken. So we're going to be replacing the glass in that next picture um, that I'll show you later. Um, so with those two inspirational pictures, we're going to be making this, which we've always wanted to do, our beachy room. So this beachy, cottagey room will take inspiration from these, this photo and the next one I'll show you later, and these curtains, that blue and white theme. This uh, ceiling fan at the time was great, it was new, it's not the original to the room, however, it's old. It's at least over a decade, but I'm guessing it's more like 15 years old. So that has to be placed out. It is definitely um, not part of, uh, the theme that we're going for and it's definitely not in style any longer this bed we are keeping this headboard and footboard this whole bed frame um, but it will be changed out we had painted it black many years ago as was the trend at the time um, but we will we will be painting it white it's a Fontana by Broy Hill bedding it's 
uh, headboard and footboard, um, but it absolutely has to be changed out. It's not going with the style in this room and it's time to change. So we're going to paint it white. Uh, this bedding will change out. This closet, prepare yourself. I'm embarrassed to show you, but I must show you. This horrible closet, this organized chaos is a disaster. All this storage will be going into a different situation. We'll be getting rid of a few things that we no longer use. The flooring in here, unless we find something really cheap on Facebook Marketplace or really big sale, we will probably not be tackling the floor. This is a vinyl floor that it is starting to show its wear. It's starting to come up a little bit and bubble in certain spots. I don't know if you can spot it on camera, but it is something that but for now, it works with the beachy feel, but as you can see, we're slowly replacing flooring through the house. It does not match with the flooring at all. There's a little lip here, and also um, we have a gray wood-looking tile floor that looks like wood, but, and then this laminate wood floor, which absolutely just does not work. And we have a little bit of a step down there. So that has to be fixed eventually, but right now it's just not in the budget or in our time schedule. Um, we will be probably placing um, an affordable rug here, so it'll make it a little more cozy. It'll complete the room. Um, but this whole room, believe it or not, is going to come in to a budget of under $300. We're going to show you how you can do this whole room, make it look brand spanking new for under $300 with some clever tips and tricks. However, keep in mind, um, we have to keep certain things in a certain budget so certain things will not get done, like the floor, some of our things that we would love to normally do will just be out of budget for now. So we are going to be very clever with our design. Um, I will show you this awful closet again. I will show you how we will pull all of this off for that amount. And at the end of this, I will show you how to complete the room with accessories that fit the style of the room and also uh, make the guests when they come here feel very welcome. You want to have soaps and body washes for them, towels for them that are particularly their own. And also it helps when we live in a time right now where it's very scary with germs, um, we don't want to get sick, it's better that everyone has their own things their own towels and whatnot. And then they don't have to worry about asking you where everything is, you know, or feel strange going in your closets. This is their own room, their own space. One thing that I will be changing through the years is obviously um, some way to put, where to put clothes. Um, that's going to be a challenge. For now, we just can't tackle that right now. Um, and eventually this bed, just so you know, will eventually, disclaimer, this bed is temporary. We will be changing it out. Down the road, we would like to have somewhat of a sofa that comes out into a bed so it can really be mostly, mainly, uh, throughout the rest of the year, an office. And then when guests come, we can open up the couch, the sofa, and we can turn it into a sleeping room. We might have some sort of storage, maybe an armoire of some sort or bureau for their clothing. For now, we're just going to do with what we have and buy a few extra things. Um, some of the other things are like the doorknob, we're going to be changing out and refreshing the same, same color, white, but we'll be refreshing it, cleaning it and refreshing it with paint and adding a little bit of another doorknob. Um, we will also be getting rid of this TV as it barely works. It's not something, it's just a big honking mess on the wall. It needs to go. We may be reincorporating this mirror. We're not sure yet as the design goes on and the time goes on, we'll decide what, what we're keeping. So first step is we're bringing a box in and we're starting to clean out and getting rid of items that we no longer want in this room and probably are getting rid of in general. So I'm going to start with the cleanup and emptying this room to nothing in here. It's easier to work. And by the way, a little tip, if you love to sing, which I do, when your room is emptied, take those few days to just sing your heart out because the acoustics will be awesome in here. My son, who's a musician, I told him, Warning, room is ready for you for a few days if you want to record or you just want to have fun. So, a little fun tip. If you love to sing your heart out, the acoustics are awesome when you get rid of all the stuff in the room. For a few days, it's fun. Let's start getting rid of stuff. I 
I save everything, folks. Just in case I make my own thing, you have to get to a point where you just throw stuff out. Uh, it gets kind of crazy in here. I save these because these are great when you're painting. And you can put your paints in here and it acts like a little um, catch-all tray for all your paints. It's great for crafts, but I used to save so many of them. And also you can plant your seeds in here, my daughter taught me. So you put your seedlings in here until they start to grow and then you transplant them. Just so you know, um, I no longer keep so, so many of them, hundreds and hundreds of them uh, through the years. I just do a little bit at a time. Why do I save all toy tins? I know I had a reason for it one time. You don't need to do that. I'm not even sure what these guys are, but my interior decorating, um, testing, and things that I, I did for projects for, for school and the books. When I did interior decorating a long time ago for school for it, it there's no point in keeping things anymore. Uh, I suppose I will use that at some point. Why do I keep these binders? I don't really need these binders. boxes are great for storage, just so you know. I do save a lot of jars. We have jars for candles that have all kinds of things in them. Jars come in very handy, especially if you plan on making your own candles or storing tacks, rubber bands, things like that. So that's useful. The awful thing about this is you forget what you have, what you own, um, when it's just sitting in a tote or a box somewhere, and oh boy, did we save everything. save everything. It's time to get rid of stuff sometimes. Whew. Oh my gosh, how it all fit. How it all fit in that, I don't know. Look at this disaster on the bed. And that's stuff we're keeping, and then I have one box here if things are getting away, giving away. So I have to rethink about these things. I save boxes because of the holidays and I ship things out to people or I wrap things for my children when they don't come with a box. Oh wow, it's a lot. So I'm really gonna have to rethink this. This is all on the bed here and you don't even see the other side of the bed. Holy moly, have to rethink this.
kind of delayed a bit and we'll explain why in a little bit, but um, what we have accomplished so far in this room, we are much later, much behind than we would normally be on a room. Um, we've had some changes in our lives lately and we'll explain what's going on. We are in the guest room and we have painted that black bed frame, um, headboard and footboard. We've painted it from black to white. We have um, painted this one wall here where it's behind the um, bed frame. We're gonna give it hopefully like a wallpaper look um, instead of buying wallpaper or doing something pretty predictable, which usually involves brick or stone for us, or doing some other type of uh, treatment with wood, which we will be planning in our room at some point with wood um, and trim work. But for this, we've decided to kind of give it a, a mural look to it that almost feels like wallpaper, hopefully. That's the intention. On the other four walls, um, and what I mean by four walls, we have the three other walls, but then we have the ceiling we're hoping we'll have enough to do. What we did is we have a lot of paints that are still great, but they won't be much longer. So we decided to put a lot of um, uh, some grays and blues and whites together to make our own paint instead of putting that money into buying a paint. And we really like the results. A little darker than we wanted, but it works. But here is, we gave you a little sample on this wall. These will be the rest of the walls. We think it's gonna be great. We hope so. We're hoping it doesn't close in the room too much, but we think it'll look really great. That is honestly a misperception, just so you know. It doesn't always close the walls in and make it look smaller. Um, what really does that is when you don't do the ceiling. So just so you know, you could probably paint your rooms black and it would still look fine. It wouldn't shrink the room at all. That's kind of a missing, you know, misperception. We are going to do the closet um, a darker blue for several reasons. Um, one being that we have some of that darker blue left and we're pretty sure after these walls and the ceiling, we will not have our homemade paint left. If we do, we'll tackle that. But I'm thinking the darker might be kind of cool. So we're gonna have different things going on. If it definitely doesn't look right, we'll change it. But that's what's going on. I don't think we'll get to finish this room, which we'll have to go into next week. Uh, we will explain why in a little bit. Um, this door was refreshed, and we'll be getting a new door knob for that. And we will be tackling trim work probably next week. We just won't be ready in time for our video to do it beforehand. But that is the room. So, here we go. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're making our wall treatment and we're going to make some straight lines um, to kind of give us the guide. And we want that to be in chalk, that is Paul's idea, that is great, um, just so we can wipe it away. If we did pencil, we'd be stuck with those lines and erasing them all. Um, if we had done uh, a paint line, uh, it would have been okay, but that's not the look I'm going for. So we want to give the impression of almost like arrows going this way, a bunch of them all over, which make it kind of makes it look like pine trees, like a simple drawing of that. But we don't want that chalk line to be there. This is just so we can stay on track and make it straight. So we are going to do that. You might not be able to see us do the whole thing, so if that is in the way, we'll get the gist of it as we go. chalk lines, there's a little bit of a glare. Please checking to see if the lines are level and we'll talk about your tool. This is uh, something I've had around for a long time. I haven't used it in probably 15-20 years. Uh, it's just an edge guide for painting. Um, 
again, like I said, I'm using this fondant in a bucket, and I figure this will be perfect for what we're looking for. Um, we're basically going to be drawing uh, lines, straight lines. Lines. To make it look like. Kind of a, what is that? Herringbone kind of? Is that a, a similar, yes. A herringbone style, um, like almost like a pine tree. It's going to look all the way down. Um, it's giving you those uh, straight line angles. Hopefully the idea is to make it look like a, a mural, a um, wallpaper almost, but it will not be. <clears throat> so what Paul did is he said he uses used this old arrow style edger and did you you didn't mention what you did on the I, um, middle there. Because we want a space to the lines, I blocked off this portion of this will take, so I don't want to draw past that line. Nice. I, think, I don't know if it's going to work, it'll work well. I think it'll look great. Well, let's find out. Now, if someone wanted to do the same treatment, they can find that edger just about any hardware store, correct? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yes. And you need that and a pencil. Yeah. Um, and Paul used a little bit of electrical tape just to kind of make a space. Yeah, make the space on the tip there. Right. Um, now, obviously, you can do this with just a ruler if you don't have one of these, which was our original plan. Yeah. So I saw this downstairs when I was hunting around. And I thought, oh. It's clever. It might be just crazy enough to work. And it seems to be. It's going to be great. Um, it'll seem long and tedious, but it'll work out it in the end. It certainly will. Seems long and tedious. <laughs> it's already feeling long and tedious. I imagine. Worthwhile in the end. Well. And I can certainly take over if you wish. But the chalk lines are giving him a guide, and we get to keep it straight that way. Right. Keep it straight, and also that way we'll have a space in between there. Yes. Space down the middle. And that's what we want to. We want that look. Right. So basically what encouraged this, which inspired us, is I had seen some wallpaper with this exact design and I thought, oh, well we could why spend on wallpaper when we could create this ourselves? And that's the thing that we do guys. We take some inspiration sometimes and we make it our own. You can probably imagine we're actually gonna make pencil lines on the wall. We will not. We're gonna use paint all over it. Yes. <laughs> I guess we didn't say that, did we? But yes, we will be doing that. And then when it's all dried up, we'll be able to go over and wipe down the, wipe off the uh, chalk lines with like a damp rag. I think it's gonna look great. Just know guys, if you're trying to save money and you're inspired by something, a lot of these things, like this particular design, you don't need to be an artist. You just need to be precise with your lines and level things off. Have a chalk line that you can use and some kind of an edger or a ruler like Paul said and a pencil. It's really that simple and you need paint. It's gonna be really cool. This is still gonna look great with no matter what we decide to do in this room. Right now we're going for beachy look and I think it works out fine. It gives you that modern beachy look and still almost I guess maybe a little farmhousey too, which is kind of neat, but a more modern twist on it. I'm excited to see it all finished. Yes. And the new trim will be thicker. Yes, yeah, so it's okay if it hides over it because and that's the great thing about doing the treatment first, because if you are just kind of going around the new trim it might look a little funny. This is going to almost look like it goes behind it, which technically it will be. We do have the ceiling fans on, folks, so obviously if it seems like it's a little flickery, the light, I apologize. It's, we're running the ceiling fan, so hopefully it doesn't deter you from seeing what's going on. And the light is a little bit bright, so it may be hard to see some of the chalk lines or the pencil lines. or And again, with the light flickering a bit because of the fan running, um, it may be hard. Sorry about that.
we have a little touching up to do as it's a little messy in certain spots. We did seem to find from this side, this side that Paul was taking over, he had a better tool for it, the tool he used to make the lines, which helped it go on much neater than the other straight edge I was using. So there will be some touching up over here. Um, and we're calling it quits for the night as we're getting tired. But anyway, we will pick up tomorrow where we left off and you will see Hopefully it all finished and touched up and we will have a finished wallpaper looking wall. Cool mural accent wall. So we have got this beautiful beach picture, but it's in a frame we don't really care for. Um, and we're gonna hang it up in our guest room. So I'm going to make an attempt to build a new frame. I'm gonna start by removing the back. I'll put that in a safe spot along with the glass. I'm going to see if I can replicate the size of this frame. That is, if I can get the glass out without breaking it. I'm going to shut off the camera in case this goes badly. Success! No broken glass. I'm just going to get a measurement of what I need here. So 
So I'm going to build this frame completely out of scrap lumber. The only lumber I had long enough uh, for the long frame was this is an old door frame that somebody left at the side of the road that I rescued. So I'm going to see if I can build that with this. Obviously the whole thing isn't going to be useful so I'm going to rip it down to a narrower size. I'm going to start by trying to remove this trim piece here. If you know me, you know I'm going to save these trim pieces in case I need it for something else. Next, I'm going to rip these boards down so as to get rid of this, these cutouts for where the hinges were. See the back of these boards is not not going to work out, so this is definitely going to be the back of the frame. This is going to be the front. Let's see how wide I'm going to go. Right, three and a quarter inches is going to be the width of our frame. Give these boards a quick sanding. So now I'm gonna set up my table saw to cut out the rabbit where the glass is gonna sit in. Going three eighths of an inch deep. Fence at three eighths of an inch, also. So now I'm transferring my measurements from the original frame to the board I will be using. Hopefully, this works out right. Now it's time to miter the corners. To make these match up better, I should have gang cut them, cut them both together. Okay, now it's time for the other, the other pieces, the uprights. Okay, this time we're going to gang cut them. Hopefully they work out well. Let's lay it out. See how it works. Here's our rough idea. I right, think that looks nice for a new beach picture. Now we're going to add some slots along these corners for our corner joints. Now I can't stress enough about using caution while working with a table saw. As you can see, my hands are a little bit close to the blade there. I'm pretty comfortable using this machine. If anybody uh, is not comfortable using this or is unsure, definitely 
use uh, as much protection as you can. Guards, push sticks, those kind of things. Okay, so we've got four of these little slivers of wood. I'm hoping to tuck into the corners there and glue them up. Okay, here it goes. Well, there's a fail right there. Try to be a little more gentle this time. Say hi to the camera. Okay, now I've got to make a new one of these that I broke. Okay. Now my plan is to let this dry and hope it works. Let me give it a quick interior measure. See if it'll work for the piece of glass. Yes, sir. All right, on to the next project. Oh, uh, we let that dry. So we had these nice metallic outlet covers and switch plates in that uh, guest room, but we're going to them white. Give them all a light sanding so that this paint should adhere a little better. I learned that a pair of vinyl gloves really helps keep the paint off your index finger when you're spray painting. However, I've also learned that if you don't have vinyl gloves, WD-40 takes the paint right off. As long as you get it early enough. So I'm going to do a couple of light coats on these, two or three. Don't want to put it on too heavy. And I'm using the Rust Oleum.
Um, we are almost finished. We did not get to finish the entire room as we have some news um, that we will be announcing in a moment of why it didn't quite get finished. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. But what we did in here was we, um, this whole room as of this point, just so you know, was free. And I mean literally free, not one penny, um, which is awesome. We have a bunch of paints that have to be used up now. And we had taken a light gray, a blue, um, this kind of a royally blue and white paint, and we mixed it together and it made this color. And we had enough to do the entire room with two good coats. It coated really well. Uh, Paul said, oh, you'll have to name it. So I'm going to call it Bella's Ocean. Bella is our dog. So um, Bella's Ocean is the color. And here's the closet. We're leaving it empty. This is for guests. This is our guest room that we had done over. So this is a guest room reveal that we're doing now. Um, it's not completely finished. What we need to do in the weeks ahead is uh, change out this trim that we're trying to do all over the house with a nice, flat, thicker trim. And we will be doing the bottom baseboard trim. We can't do that now because we haven't done the floor. That's another thing we haven't done yet. When we do the floor to match the rest of the floors, these are the rest of the floors. When we do that, we will have a nice, easy transition from one room to the next. But that will be next on our list down the road at some point in the winter. <laughs> Bella's little camp out spot as we were working on the room, she wanted to come in. Um, we have a frame here that had broken glass. Um, my mother had passed it down to me. Um, we love this beachy photo, um, but it needs new glass. It was had a large crack going through it. So we took the glass out and we're just keeping the picture as of now. We have to find a place that will replace the glass. So that's that. We kept our curtains that were here because it worked with the room. Our basket with a blanket. And we have uh, kept the nightstand. Let me just set it up a little differently. We have this frame. Um, this picture was passed down from Paul's aunt. We loved the beachy picture. This is kind of our beachy room but the frame was very 1980s. So Paul had taken it off and had built this new frame, which is really cool, and mitered the corners. He had put um, some beadboard on the back um, to nail it to it so it would really give it a lot of strength and hold it in properly. And this here was a design that we did on the wall, which was really cool. It was white paint and then we had a slate gray paint. It almost looks black and we made the designs all over it to almost give the idea of a mural wallpaper, paper, excuse me, a mural wallpaper and uh, it's our little accent wall. And it wasn't just because we didn't, weren't sure if we'd have enough paint. That would actually be a good reason because we had just enough to do the other walls and the ceiling. Uh, but this was mainly because of the um, wanting an accent wall. Now, we also will be changing out the ceiling light, the ceiling fan. We'll be just putting a, a light in there. Um, the fans that we've seen are expensive and they're really not ones that we like. It would be worth spending a little bit if it was actually a cost that that was worth it to us if the style was right, but we just can't find it. So we're just gonna go with a light that we have all picked out that seems beachy for this room. Um, and we'll be getting, actually that's on its way, so we're hoping for that to come in. And we are going to be changing out the doorknob and hinges to this door. Um, that has not come in yet, we're waiting on that as well. So we, if you remember this, this bookcase, this was in here in the closet and we had crafts in there because it was kind of our office slash guest room. It was way too cluttered and messy, but that um, shelf in there was kind of a greenish um, color. I don't know what to call it. Um, but anyway, we had painted this gray because it just didn't fit in here and we still had some of that slate gray, but I added some white to it to make it a lighter gray. So now it's like a smoky gray, which I love. 
and it almost has a slate look to it, but it's definitely different. So um, we have all of these, um, we had all of these accessories. We thought we'd add a few games and some books for different guests that we have and a little bit of autumn decor. I have to have owls because I love my owls. And we had a little poof in here. It was, we've had that there for a while and the colors worked really well in here. So what's going to happen um, in the next couple of weeks? We'll be changing out the trim to have a thicker, straighter trim to look more with the style of our home. And it will be real wood. This is, um, I don't even know what it is, but it's a very papery thin, and I mean literally, if I were to bang this hard enough with an object, it would really peel away. It's awful, it's very cheesy and cheap. So it'll be thicker. We changed out all the outlet covers and the switch covers to a white color to go more with the room. It was kind of a dirty looking beige. It looks terrible. Um, this bedding we had already, so I had put in my son's actual, um, actually his uh, college blanket um, from his uh, XL twin bed in college in his dorm and we have that is like a quilt at the bottom of the bed and we have blues and bron uh, browns going on. We had painted our bed white and there you go. So it, a lot of this um, was, all of this was actually what we had on hand. This was a free project so far. We will be paying for a light, very cheap. I think it was $30. We'll show you when that comes. We will be um, definitely paying for the trim and that will be the biggest cost and then for I believe it was $90 was a shag style light gray uh, rug so that'll be coming in soon as well so anyway for now this week it is free um, we love how everything came out in here we had some of the blue left but not anything to mix it with left so we went a little darker in the closet here and as you can see it's a little lighter here and the closet's a little darker but we like it we added some hangers for guests to put their clothes now all of this is here because we don't have a bureau in here this is here for guests that they can put their suitcase and their clothes and whatnot in here and this is it this is the finished room we're very pleased with it all for zero dollars. Hello everybody. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Brambleberry Cottage. Um, we're on a little bit of a somber note today. Um, we just got news that our, our sweet Bella, our dog, is um, she's got a, a bad tumor. tumor um, a large tumor on her spleen and um, it's not we don't have a lot of time left with her so because of that and i'm sorry i'm trying not to get choked up but um what we're trying to do is um get as much done as we can um there may be a lull in between that we weren't expecting um she is 12 years old but we were expecting to have her for a long time um we're used to having her underfoot and around the house so it's a little um hard to take in the news so, um, and of course with the holidays coming, it couldn't have been, been at a worse time. Um, but we were already starting this room when we heard the news. So because of that, uh, we have not finished. Um, she hasn't been herself uh, the past few days and um, more tired and quiet and uh, just not herself, uh, not eating as much. Um, we have her on medicine to help with the pain. Um, so, and we're trying to spend even more time with her as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah, they said they gave us anywhere from days to months left, um, but we know it's coming. Um, so because of that, we're still continuing on uh, with our projects, but it's taking a little bit of a lull. Um, we're going a little bit slower because we're trying to get in as much time we can with her. Um, this room, as of now, was finished for free, as I've mentioned before. Um, we're very proud of this room. This is a guest room for our guests. Um, it was a guest room slash office it at one time. Office, yes. um, but we will be 
um, continuing to make it an office as the time progresses. But for now, we have company coming. Right. Um, what we plan on in the future is eventually putting in a pull-out sofa so we can sit in here with our office, and then eventually um, it would pull out for guests to stay in. Right. We have an area of crafts and whatnot. We don't. We have a small cottage, so we don't know exactly where we're going to put it. It was in here, and just I don't want, want to return it to here because it was a big mess. Unless we can find a really good storage solution. We're pretty creative, so we'll come up with. We something. are. <laughs> um, so as of now, it is just a guest room. Um, the desk is downstairs in our finished basement. We're trying to figure out a space for that, as we also have the holidays coming, which right. means we usually set up a village and we set up all kinds of decor and the space becomes even more limited and we just don't want it to just randomly put it in a spot and be cluttered um, then it's just not pretty to look at so we have storage solutions to come up soon um, we'll right. be showing our decor and whatnot so as of next week um, normally I would have finished this room all in one week but because of the news it delayed me ordering the things we needed which delayed coming in and also we've been very focused. Somehow we got through finishing up because we had to. We had a somewhat finished room and some areas not finished at all. Um, and we were in a little bit of a uh, time crunch to get things finished. And the house is always in disarray when you're um, doing a project like this. You know, the bed was out of the room and it was just kind of, we need to get things somewhat back into, back into order so yes. we can have our house back to normal. For now, so this is what we have so far. We're planning on doing uh, some more touches around this room to make it finally complete. Yes. Yeah, so what we have left is um, a light, um, which I explained in a previous um, uh, reel of uh, what's going on in this room. We have the, a new light. We're um, omitting the ceiling fan. Uh, we have a new doorknob and hinges to kind of go with the rest of the look in our home. We're slowly doing those. We have um, a rug coming in that just kind of helps with the uh, flooring for, so it's soft and comfortable for guests. It kind of completes the room. It's a nice accessory for that, but also it might hide some of the flooring as I showed before. We have, um, obviously we're slowly redoing our floors and right. um, the bedrooms are the last to go um, and, and our bathroom and our, our ensuite. Nice, yeah. So because of that, um, we have um, to do it at little stages. But this particular time, we're just going to add a rug for now. We also, a big part of that, uh, the cost and the time will be the trim work for this room, which we want to continue as well into the hall. Um, I don't know what next week will bring, um, or week to week, so I can't really give you a heads up on what's going on because we're all kind of basing our lives around Bella right now and trying to squeeze in as much time as we can. But um, So when we find out, you'll find out. Right, right. So um, please keep some good thoughts coming our way um, for Bella. And uh, we thank you so much to all our friends and family who have been so supportive. Um, Bella is our furry child. <laughs> She's a part of our family. Is, yeah. We've had her since eight weeks old. Uh, we've raised her children with her and uh, had a lot of memories. Uh, we've seen we've seen each other all go through surgeries and um, injuries and sicknesses and um, renovations all kinds of things and Bella's kids, been there the whole time yeah Bella's been here kids growing going through graduations and changes and she's been here all along so um, it's going to be a tough time for us so bear with us uh, we're still going to be doing our projects but it may take a little longer and uh, it may be shifted around a little bit we thank you for having patience with us and coming along for the ride thank you for all of those who've sent wonderful sweet wishes and um, we thank you for watching um, please hit the subscribe button. Please, um, if you want to not miss um, an episode, please press the notification bell at the bottom so you'll get notified when the next video is up. Yeah, or give us a thumbs up at least. Yeah, leave a comment even. Yeah, That'd we'd love that. We, we appreciate all your um, support and yeah. kindness. So thanks again. Thank See you, you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.